Rossiter United, welcome to Lesson 4 of Chapter 3. We're going to study the later peoples of the Fertile Crescent as we wrap up our studies of Mesopotamia. The goal here is to understand that after the Sumerians, there were many cultures that ruled parts of the Fertile Crescent. It didn't just end with the Sumerians. So after Sargon had passed away, the city of Ur continued to prosper, but they were constantly being attacked. So the city of Ur falls in 2000 BC, and a lot of different groups wrestled for power after that, starting with Babylon, which is what we refer to as modern-day Baghdad. By 1800 BC, Babylon was the strongest city in Mesopotamia, and it was ruled by Hammurabi. Hammurabi was a strong warrior. Uh, his main contribution to civilization was Hammurabi's Code. It was a set of 282 laws that dealt with the basic parts of everyday life. And we still use a lot of these concepts in the modern world. This idea of eye for an eye. You take out my eye, I get to take out yours. You break my bone, I'll break yours. You cost me money, you pay me back. But if you notice with some of these laws, they put different values on the costs of upper class versus slaves who were freed versus slaves. It gives more value to the upper class than it does to slaves. Hammurabi conquered Mesopotamia for about 42 years and it was important because the rules applied to everyone and they were clear. After Hammurabi passed away Babylon declined and different powers rose through cycles starting with the Hittites who were masters of ironworking, which were stronger weapons. They created and mastered the chariot, which is a wheeled horse cart used in battle. Shortly after they ruled, the Hittite king was killed by an assassin. And then the Kassites took over. They filled in after the Hittites collapsed. They were centered north of Babylon, captured the city to gain power of all of Mesopotamia, but then they collapsed after the Assyrians took over. They originated in northern Mesopotamia, controlled Babylon briefly, but they were driven out. It took them 300 years to recover their strength. By around 900 BC, they expanded their empire to include all of Mesopotamia and parts of Asia Minor, or Turkey, as well as Egypt. They decided before they invaded, they would loot villages, steal all their goods, and then burn their crops down on the ground so that their opponents were weak before they invaded. They demanded very heavy taxes after they invaded these lands, too. So not only did they take you over, they were going to charge you an invasion tax. The Chaldeans took over when Nebuchadnezzar rebuilt Babylon after centuries of destruction. They worshipped original Sumerian gods and mastered early astronomy. Things like star charts, calendars, and geometry. Then the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were located in modern Lebanon. Now they weren't strong because they had a strong military. They were strong because they were good traitors. So this would be the Babylonian Empire, this would be the Assyrian Empire. Great Mr. Rossiter, how the heck am I supposed to remember all these groups? Thanks a lot you jerk, alright? How about this? Sam and Bob heard kangaroos and chimpanzees playing. Sam and Bob heard kangaroos and chimpanzees playing. Sumer, Sam, Akkad, and the Babylonians, Bob, Hittites, Kassites, Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Phoenicians. Sam and Bob heard kangaroos and chimpanzees playing. You're welcome. Now, a little bit more about the Phoenicians before we wrap up. Phoenicia was located around uh, modern-day Lebanon. Now, you had mountains to the north, and you had the constant invasions that came along with living in Mesopotamia. So they didn't have a lot of resources available. What they did have was one great one, the cedar tree. They still use the cedar tree in their flag. Cedar is a strong, light lumber that's great for building houses and making items. Because you couldn't really trade to the north of the mountains and the attackers, they had to look to the sea. They became expert sailors. They built very large ships that were designed for speed and could trade with civilizations throughout. If you take a look, they were able to go all the way through some of the other civilizations of the world, like the Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians, all the way through even to the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks a lot. See you next time.